My name is Monica Swope. I'm the founder and CEO of Learning Dimensions. And we have a special segment. Today we are interviewing Dr. Tertel Oli. He's going to share a little bit with us as we explore what does it mean to be a learning change agent. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and direct our attention to Dr. Tertel Oli. Um, so good to see you. Thank you for taking the time and engaging in this interview with us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. So we have a few questions, um, and the first thing, if, if you could just share with um, all of our viewers, where are you from, and um, also tell us about the organization that you actually represent. Good. Well, I was born in Chicago, born and raised in Chicago, um, product of the Chicago Public Schools. I was raised by my grandparents, mostly in Hyde Park, and then we lived on the far south side where I attended Catalina High School. I went by way of community college. I first went to the Southeast, then I went to Olive Harvey, and then I went on to the School of the Art Institute. Um, ended up with degrees in art education and art therapy, and, and associates, always bring up the associates, and associates in science. Oh, wonderful, wow. Um, as far as the organization I yes. represent, my company is called Only Studios, LLC, and we're committed to the combination of creativity, culture, and we're active in education and also in the visual arts. When I say visual arts, I mean film, animation, graphic models. We're talking design and publication of it, as well as offering consulting services to educators and librarians. Wow. And I know you do some curricular work as well, exactly. work with educators as well. Um, how long has your organization been in existence? We started in 1981. That's what we're claiming as the official start date. We were busy doing a lot of things before then, but we claim 1981 because not only um, as a start date, but that would be the year where we published our first graphic novel, which mm. is called Nob, the Protector of the Pyramids. Mm. So the copyright date is the start date for the company in that regard. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about the mission and the vision of the organization as a whole. You talk a little bit about what you do, but if you can go a little bit deeper sharing with us what the mission vision is, and um, we'll start with that. Okay, well the first part of the vision is teaching. Mm -hmm. And by teaching, we mean formal and formal education by way of the visual arts. We have a strong emphasis and commitment to the visual arts as part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. Um, neurologists and anthropologists pretty much agree that the big brain that gives us the big head, that helps us to outthink the saber-toothed tiger, came by way of art making. Mm -hmm. That the more humans made art and the more humans processed the art that was being made, then the cognitive processing just escalated into brain power. So we're big on that. We're big on commerce. We would like to help people to become more professional. Mm -hmm. So there's one part of teaching which is all of learning, mm -hmm. you know, to be a better person. Sure. And then for those that think they have a professional edge, then we want them to learn what best practices are in being a professional, whether they are art therapist, mm -hmm. a public school educator, or if they want to be a freelance illustrator. So we pay attention to all of that um, in our practice and in our mission, and constantly looking at ways that we can do those things better. And tell me a little bit about the impact that you think you're having on all of the people that you work with and who work with your organization? The impact, boy, that's a good one. Yeah. Because, you know, you always think you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. You're always thinking so you could be so much better. So true. Okay, and then I run into someone who maybe I worked with them 20, 30 years ago, and they're telling me the results. Mm -hmm. For instance, I was part of a fine arts center that was organized I was one of the uh, initial directors of it. It was in the old Robert Taylor Homes. Mm -hmm. It was literally two ground level apartments that were converted. It was part of the old Black on Black Love campaign. Mm -hmm. So we were the Black on Black Love Fine Arts Center. Mm -hmm. We're talking early 80s. Okay. okay. Two years ago, I'm on the lakefront, and a woman goes by and she says, Turtel, Turtel, I know you. I can tell by that wall. <laughs> Look at and then she, she pulls up her daughters and she's explaining all the things we did in the art center. Wow. And the goal of the art center was to use the visual arts, was to use the visual arts to reduce crime. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. okay, and, and to reduce incidences of violence. And it proved to work. Mm -hmm. um, by way of my tenure at the Chicago Public Schools, I run into ex-students who I can see from where they've gone later on in life how it had an impact. Uh, speaking of the the uh, Black on Black Love Fine Arts Center, which was not far from where we are, we're at the Southside Community Arts Center in Bronzeville. It's at 3831 South Michigan. It is the last remaining art center that was commissioned by the WPA, which was the Work Progress Administration. In fact, Eleanor Roosevelt came here to do the commissioning. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Margaret Burroughs, who is renowned for being the founder of the DuSable Museum, was at that time involved in inception of this art center and it's been continuously running. The WPA is not active anymore, but the community has kept this center going. In fact, my career started here and across the street. Wow. At that time, across the street was the DuSable Museum. It was in Margaret's basement. Yeah. And right after high school, I was in the area trying to find scholarship money at the uh, Chicago Urban League. And somebody said, maybe you should talk to Dr. Burroughs. I'm like, sure. okay, I'll go talk. I show up, she's like, good, go downstairs and volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the next time I came, she said, go across the street and see what they're doing. And this place was across the street. Wow. So we're here, uh, the backdrop is dealing with this exhibit, which is called Black Age 18, as in Black Age of Comics. And we've been growing a movement, which started here, mm -hmm. February of 1993. The Black Age of Comics deals with comic books, graphic novels, games, children's books and educational material that comes from a black, African, urban, or independent perspective. Mm -hmm. If it's coming out of that experience, we're saying, you are now manifesting the black age. Okay, and so um, this is also what's going on here at the Art Center, which is why we're here talking. And tell us really briefly about some of the um, installations with the exhibit. Okay, we, we have clusters of work. It's a group exhibit. We have printed material that's been circulated in the market. We have original art mm -hmm. um, that's donated by different artists to the exhibit. Mm -hmm. We have printed material. Um, the exhibit opens to the public on the 13th of September. The 12th of September, we will have a um, sort of like a convention here with vendors and workshops. So this show presents work and ideas over the 22 plus years that we've been doing the Black Age of Comics. Uh, we get conventions in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Detroit, uh, we get Black Comic Book Day in Harlem and mm -hmm. Schaumburg. Mm -hmm. We have an event in San Francisco and we also do an event in Atlanta. In, I'm sorry, in Atlanta. So we're, we're very um, productive. And it's a combination of pictures and words. Uh, we strongly believe that a positive fantasy life Mm -hmm. is the foundation for a positive reality. Wow. So the contemporary mythology that we're weaving helps to facilitate that. In my company, Only Studios, we have a downloadable on the website at onlystudios.com. We have a curriculum guide, mm -hmm. which gives 50 points on how to bring the graphic novel's concept into the classroom across the curriculum. And um, as we go ahead and recap, um, this segment is all about celebrating learning change agents which Dr. Only, you have demonstrated for decades to be someone who's forward with learning change, being a learning change agent. But what does that mean to be a learning change agent? If you could just briefly share what that would mean. To me, being a learning change agent, you know, it's right there. You have to look at learning. What does it take to learn? Whether you're talking um, auditory or pragmatic or whatever. And then change, you have to modify what you're bringing to the learner based on what works best for them. Mm -hmm. And that means within yourself, your delivery, and also means the physical plant you're working on. So I think it really is flexibility that's made to accommodate the person in front of you. Thank you, Dr. Only, for your time. Thank you.